the wall things that happen month by month. So our first one this school year will be 1962 at a glance. And what I'll do is I'll tell you certain things that happen in, around America in each month of the year. Now, in this particular one, we're only going to go to September because what happens in October of 1962 of emphasis? Do you want us taking notes on all this? Oh, yeah. Or can we just oh, no. enjoy your lecture? No, you, you can enjoy it if you want, but I'd write it down. Okay. Um, but uh, what happened in October of 62 that was big in this country? The Cuban Missile Crisis, which is our next topic. So I'm telling you things that happened up to October, because I'm going to tell you some really important things that happened in October and December. Okay, so 1962 at a glance, we'll tell you what happened in January. Boy, this was a dumb move on somebody's part. In January of 1962, the Beatles produced their first album themselves. Okay, there's a poster of the Beatles if you're not sure who they are. But they produced their first album themselves. What's kind of weird about that? Who usually produces an album for a group? A recording company. Well, they had to do theirs themselves because Decca Records in Britain didn't think they were good enough. Now, think how much money Decca Records lost on that decision. So anyway, in January of 1962, the Beatles produced their first album themselves after British recording studio Decca rejected them after an audition. Can you imagine the colossal mistake that was? Holy smokes. Colossal mistake. They're still making money on Be Beatles stuff. Crazy. What do you think happened in February, February 26th? And when you think back of, uh, about our Mercury space flights, what might have happened on February 26th of 62? Our new hero may have been celebrated. Who was our new hero? First man in American in orbit. In orbit the Earth. John Glenn. So what happened is John Glenn on February 26, 1962, he was honored with a parade in Washington, D.C. He was honored with a parade in Washington, D.C. February 26th. Now, what he did is this parade... You've seen these parades. A lot of them are in New York City, these ticker tape parades where they throw the ticker tape out the windows. It wasn't quite that fancy. But John Glenn was paraded from the White House, where he met President Kennedy, up Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol. What do you think he was doing at the Capitol? What did he go to the Capitol? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. no, he, no, he didn't get a medal. He met President Kennedy at the White House, and they had a parade from the White House up Pennsylvania Avenue, up towards Capitol Hill, and he stopped at the Capitol. What do you do at the Capitol, you think? What's that? Well, you might have it, what'd you say? He addressed Congress about his trip. Okay, so he traveled in a parade, celebratory parade, up Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House to the Capitol, where he addressed Congress. Now, as I mentioned to you, Kennedy grounded him, and he flew again, though, on October 29, 1998. He flew again on October 29, 1998. It's quite a stretch in between flights, huh? And what he did, as I mentioned yesterday, is he entered space in the space shuttle program at the age of 77. He was 77 when he went into space again. What, 35 plus years later, he got, went into space again on October 29, 1998, at the age of 77. Okay, March 2nd, for you sports fans, on March 2nd, 1962, the Philadelphia Warriors defeated the New York Knicks 169 to 147 in an NBA basketball game. On March 2nd, 1962, the Philadelphia Warriors defeated the New York Knicks 169 to 147 in an NBA game. Pretty high scoring center then, wasn't it? 
Philadelphia Warriors defeated the New York Knicks 169-147. Highest scoring game in NBA history at that time, but there was something even more special that happened that night. And I'll bet you that Hoyt Nick was configured out, or Mauricio, what happened that night? Wilt scored 100. Wilt Chamberlain of the Philadelphia Warriors scored 100 points in that game. Still an NBA record today. 100 points. That was before the three-point line, by the way, if that interests you. So he scored 100 points in that basketball game, which still stands as an NBA record today. 100 points in one game. It was 169 to 147. 169 to 147. Okay, April 22nd, kind of a significant time in the Kennedy presidency. Now, a president gets elected and then they have their ups and downs, right, during the presidency. Well, it was on our, uh, April 22nd of 1962. The historians say that Kennedy was at the height of his popularity. In other words, he was more popular on April 22nd of 62 than any other time in his presidency. He was most popular. What made him popular? Now give me, well give me, give me, let's see if we can come up with two or three things, examples. What made him popular? Why was he a popular president? He was, he was a much better president in death than he may have ever been in life. What made him so popular? He was so good looking. He, there you go. That's very good. He had very good looks. Very handsome man. And this is kind of an example of that. I had a better one, but I'll just show you this one. I can't figure out what I did with that poster. But this is a you know, here he is at the helm of his boat. Handsome guy. Young daughter at his side. There were a lot of pictures like this. Cecil Stoughton, the White House photographer, Mrs. Kennedy hated her kids' pictures taken. And anytime she wasn't looking or was gone, he would call, President Kennedy would call in Cecil Stoughton and have him get some pictures of the family. Because he liked that. Mrs. Kennedy didn't like it much. So, not only was he a handsome man, which made him popular, he was young. He also had a young wife and small children in the White House, which was the, not the norm at the time. So some examples of why he was so popular. He was a good-looking man. He had a beautiful wife, young wife at his side. He had young children in the White House that people took to. 18-month-old John Jr. at the time. Four-year-old Caroline. They weren't used to that in the Eisenhower-Truman administrations. They weren't used to kids. The Kennedy family was pretty tight bunch. They got together all the time at their summer home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. And what was usually the activity they got themselves involved in that got a lot of publicity and a lot of press when they were all together in Hyannisport? What did they participate in? Touch football. It was a really big deal. Women and men took part, mainly the men. But there was always footage of the entire Kennedy family at their summer home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Playing touch football, that was a big thing. So his popularity was caused by a lot of things that weren't really political, but more appearance-wise. Okay, and on April 22nd of 1962, historians believe that Kennedy was at the height of his popularity. May 19th, kind of a famous thing we'll show you later when we get into the colorful and colorless 60s. On May 19th, 1962 is when actress Marilyn Monroe sang her very famous Happy Birthday. President Kennedy on his 45th birthday at Madison Square Garden in New York. So on May 19, 1962, is the famous day that Marilyn Monroe sang Happy Birthday to President Kennedy on his 45th birthday party at Madison Square Garden in New York. We haven't talked anything about that, have we? But we're going to go into some major league detail later. We'll talk about the President's reaction to that, and some of the things he said, and who set it all up, and what kind of shape Marilyn Monroe was in when she got there, and how tight was her dress and how much it cost and all kinds of crazy stuff that you won't believe. <laughs> but anyway, after she got done singing, you know, happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> Kennedy stepped to the podium and he said, quote, thank you. I can now retire from politics after having had happy birthday 
sung to me in such a sweet and wholesome way. Which it definitely was not. <laughs> so, little Kennedy went there. But we'll tell you that story later. That's an interesting story in itself. Okay, June. June 25th. This morning we had a little problem with this. Problem with this. We had a little bit of problem with this this morning. What happened on June 25th, 1962 that we violated this morning? We violated it this morning at this school. Right out in front of the school by that flagpole. That's when the Supreme Court set the ruling of separation of church and state. That occurred on June 25th, 1962, when the Supreme Court banned official prayer in schools, making building that wall we know as separation of church and state as we know it today. Okay? It was on June 15th of 1962. June 15th? June, excuse me, June 25th of 1962 that the Supreme Court banned official prayer in public schools, building that wall we know today as separation of church and state. So really what we did this morning isn't really kosher. But you know, there's a lot of stories on that. Um, you know, when I was in, when I was in the business of putting up graduations, and I did a couple here, but they don't have them here, we, we always had an invocation and a benediction at all the graduations, which is a We'd invite somebody from the clergy to come and give a prayer before and afterwards. When I was doing this in Montana, we used to rotate that among clergymen in the community. When I was in Fort Benton many years ago, uh, a group came up, an atheist group came up to me and said, uh, we, are, we are hoping that you don't do that again this year. And I said, well, yeah, we're going to do it. And, he, and they were on me about it's against the law. And not only did we do it, we did it with United States senators speaking at graduation. <laughs> which Senator Max Bacchus of Montana thought it was great, but you're really not supposed to do those type of things. We used to put up harvest dinner posters in the school for the local church that had their harvest dinner, and the same group came up there and wanted to put up a, you know, I hate God poster, so to speak. And I said, well, you're not putting that up. Well, how come you got that poster up for the harvest dinner? I mean, we just had a lot of troubles with that. And so the separation of church and state has always been a little controversial, but by law, you should not have that happen. And as a result of that Supreme Court decision on June 25th, 1962. That's how we see that today. Okay? July 6th. A very famous writer died on July 6th, 1962 at the age of 64, William Faulkner. So on July 6th, 1962, famous writer William Faulkner died at the age of 64. Kind of, he had an interesting career. You know that he won two, not one, but two what? Pulitzer Prizes. One for literature and one Nobel Peace Prize. So he actually won two Pulitzer Prizes for literature and one Nobel Peace Prize. So whoever said that was correct. Not many people have won two Pulitzers and one Nobel Peace Prize, but he did. Very famous writer. He died at the age of 64 on July 6, 1962. Speaking of deaths, another one on August 5th. 1962, just about three months after her famous rendition of Happy Birthday to the President, Marilyn Monroe was found dead at her Los Angeles home on August 5th of 1962 at the age of 36 of a drug overdose. So on August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was found dead in her Los Angeles home of a drug overdose at the age of 36. Now, who does not have a t-shirt yet? Who, if you don't have it, okay. If you don't think about it, the only thing about this, see if we can answer this. August 17th. An 18-year-old by the name of Peter Fector died. An 18-year-old by the name of Peter Fector died. Why? How? Oh, whoever can tell me that is going to get a t-shirt. What was the date? What was the date? August 17, 1962, an 18-year-old boy by the name of Peter Fector died. How'd he die? T-shirt on the line. How'd he die? Nope. Did he get shot? He got shot. Okay, but I, but, but I got to know the detail to get the T-shirt. Got shot. Who? By a white police officer. He did. He got shot by a white police officer. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Johnson. You're right there. Have you got a t-shirt yet? No. I'm going to maybe give it this to you, but what type of white police officer shot this 18-year-old Peter Fetter? 
a prejudiced one. No, he wasn't prejudiced. He had a job to do. He was legitimate in shooting. Because Peter Fector did something naughty. No, nope. tried to steal. Yeah, he kind of tried to steal something. Okay, I'm gonna let you answer. He tried to steal his freedom. Did he try to shoot the cops? No, he tried to steal his freedom. Peter Fector tried to be, steal his freedom. He was shot while trying to steal his freedom. Where is he free? Trying to get free from? What? For Christ! <laughs> Hell yeah, help her out. You have a T-shirt yet? No. Okay, if you can help her out, I'll give you both one because she's really there. What? Prison? Anybody want to help her? If this class can't help this out, I'm really gonna be disappointed. This guy was fighting. He was he was stealing his freedom and was shot. Was he blamed for it? What? 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 No, he wasn't. <laughs> We're not even going to get to September at this rate. He was stealing his freedom illegally. He got shot and killed. What was he doing? Running away from From where? His country is the legal immigrant. You're getting close, but you're all dopes. He was an illegal immigrant, but he didn't want to live in his country, so what did he get shot doing? What border? They were mandated like 300 years before. There was not a slave. I swear to God, I'm quitting education. Abraham Lincoln emancipated. I know. Okay, wait. You tell me where This is being recorded, I want you to know. Yeah, he, what, what was he trying to get away from? And they shot him. No, but you're getting closer, Mary. What? Oh, he was trying to go to like West He was trying to climb over the Berlin Wall to get to freedom. In America. My God, that was a really brutal. That was a brutal, brutal deal. No, Peter Fector became the first casualty of the Berlin Wall. And on August 17, 1962, he was shot in the back with a machine gun trying to defect over the Berlin Wall by East German police trying to flee into West Berlin. Unbelievable. All right, and finally, now that I am totally beyond belief here, what happened on September 30th of 1962? And we're going to talk way more about this in detail later. Riots occurred at the University of Mississippi. Riots occurred at the University of Mississippi. Why, Levi? The Little Rock Nine? Nope, you're close. That already occurred during the Eisenhower administration. Who was that kid? He was trying to who was? James Meredith. <laughs> James Meredith, a Air, an Air Force veteran, was denied admission to the University of Mississippi because of his race. President Kennedy sent in the National Guard to ensure he could go to classes, which ensued in a riot. And we'll talk way more about that later. So, again, on September 30th, 1962, the admission of a Negro student to the University of Mississippi caused violent riots, and the man was this fellow right here. Look at this. James Meredith. Meredith off to enroll. Barnett Action Block. Whole story right there. James Meredith. Air Force veteran. Can you imagine that? Because you were black, you couldn't go to college, University of Mississippi, but it was okay for you to serve your country in the Air Force. 